Okay, so today, hmm, you know what? We're gonna review a Peter McKinnon product. I need to channel my inner Peter McKinnon for this video. I need coffee and a hat. I'll be right back. Okay, got the coffee, got the hat. Now, let's do the intro. What's up, everybody? Odie Matthews here, and today we are going to talk about the Peter McKinnon Nomadic Travel Camera Backpack. Let's roll the intro. put my coffee off to the side because I don't want to spill it. Okay, so I am a massive fan of Peter McKinnon. He's actually my favorite YouTuber. And when I found out a while ago that he paired up with Nomadic, a very well-respected and big company in the bag industry, to make a camera travel hybrid backpack, I was ecstatic. Unfortunately, I missed the Kickstarter. And because of the price tag on this bag, which we will get into and discuss, I wasn't able to really afford to get one until recently. And now that I have my hands on one, I took it down to Bryce National Park for an overnight hiking, camping, photography trip to test this thing out. And I will say overall, my first impression and my general impression of this bag is, wow. Okay, let's just get the big question out of the way, the price tag of this bag, the whole kit, all the accessories, the bag, the camera, the camera cube bag thing, all the accessories, all of that comes in at about $600. The bag itself with no accessories comes in at about $400. Now, if you're someone that's big into photography, you think that you could utilize all of the accessories I'm gonna show you and all the functions of this bag fit what you need for your photography lifestyle, then I think this bag is 100% worth the investment. I am not the biggest photographer in the world, but I do a lot of stuff for my YouTube channel now outdoors, and I am very happy with my investment into this bag because I utilize pretty much everything it offers and I think that it all works really well together. But if you're a casual photographer, if you're someone that brings only like a camera and maybe a lens, and you're looking at this bag more for the travel side of things, but that price tag worries you, then I would just go with the bag itself or maybe find something a little bit more in your price range. 400 to $600 for a camera travel bag is expensive for anybody. But I will say that if you decide to invest in this bag, the quality of the materials, the build, and the, the whole hardware system that it has is 100% reflected in the price tag and worth it. The harness system on this bag is phenomenally comfortable, especially when it's fully loaded out and I hide, you got load lifters that really help distribute the weight. These straps are beefy, comfortable with this foam, just something intense, but not, they didn't dig in, they didn't hurt, they were very, very comfortable. You got a great back panel that breathes, You've even got, if you can see, the Peter McKinnon skull right here, great little touch. You've got a spot here for luggage pass-through if you wanted to combine this with like roller luggage. And then it also comes with hip straps. I removed them. They're somewhere in my accessory closet. I did not go looking for them. I do not really use hip straps, especially when I'm traveling. I found trying to put it in the overhead compartment with hip straps that are dangling or flopping everywhere. It's just, it's a hassle I don't want to deal with. And I wanted, I should have brought them for the hike just in case it became uncomfortable. I didn't know what I was getting into, but I was really pleasantly surprised, surprised that this bag was extremely comfortable, especially on long hikes through the through ups and downs and snow and ice. And the weight of this bag never really got to me throughout the entire trip. And that's fully loaded with everything that I brought in it. And for me, that was a huge surprise. And that's, that's incredible because a lot of bags, if I were to walk with them for five miles up and down, they would eventually get are painful. They would they'd become uncomfortable, but this bag surprisingly never did. So that's point number one. Point number two is the hardware, right? YKK zippers with weather guard seals. Plus you have some extremely cool zipper pulls. Now, most zipper pulls are just like a little piece of the cloth or the string with like the little foam or like the injected molded little zipper pulls, but these are long. These are long and they have the Peter McKinnon uh, nomadic tag on them, but these are something that you can literally get your whole hand and rip right on all of these except for the back compartment the back compartment have these little different ones that are like wrapped in like the waxy stuff I'm not really sure what that's what that's called but the the, the ones on the front here you can You can get a hold of that and you can 
and I knew that the hardware on this bag would be really, really solid because it has Peter McKinnon's name on it and he's not going to put his name on something that isn't going to hold up, especially since he's used this bag out and doing the things he does. And, you know, he's, you know, if this was a Peter McKinnon video, I'd be out in like a lake with snow and coffee and a Ford Raptor doing donuts and tons of slow motion as, you know, the bag spins in the air and with an epic voiceover as music explodes in the background, right? But, I'm, you know, I'm at my dining room table. So that's what we get for this. But honestly, these zipper pulls, I know it's not something that I typically hit on super heavy, but I was really thoroughly impressed with the hardware, the zips, the zipper pulls, the weather guard seals, all the hardware on this bag, the materials especially, very water, weather resistant. It's got that tarpaulin signature nomadic look, but compared to their other bags, I feel like this one really stands out and looks better. I wasn't a huge fan of the look of the 40 or 30 liter travel bag that they have because it's like a rectangle, right? And the travel backpack, it just wasn't something that did it for me. But this one really, really is a solid looking bag. I think this plus the Navigator series is, is, a, is, a, is a better looking series of bags than their original ones they had put out uh, back in the day. I think the look of this bag is something phenomenal. I like this little addition here with the Peter McKinnon signature nomadic plate down here at the bottom. I think that really, I don't know, just adds this whole like Elon Musk Formula One, I'm gonna go jetpack around the moon aesthetic that this bag really has. And for me, I really, I kind of like it a lot. Actually, I, I, I dig it quite a, quite a bit. And point number three is the organization and accessibility. Now, this bag does come with a side access here that if you wanted to, you have access to like, these are my two lenses and my Canon camera sitting right there at the side access. I'm not one that typically uses Side access is just not something that I, I typically need. I'll use it if I do, but for the most part, I don't. Everything on this bag is something that I had to, I, when I was getting into it, I had to lay it down and open it clamshell style to get the full access to whatever I need. However, when I'm hiking and I'm doing, like when I go out and do my photography stuff, I usually just keep my camera out. I'm not putting it up every time I take a photo. I'm not taking a photo and putting it up, walking 20 feet just to pull it back out. For the most part, my camera stays out in my pocket too that I do a lot of my filming and vlogging on. It's so small that it can stay in this quick access compartment up front or literally my pocket because that's just how small it is and how easy it is to use. So even though there's nothing really easily accessible from the outside of the bag except for the side access and the front compartment, even though you have to lay this thing down and open it full clamshell, I found that getting into it and accessing and the accessibility of it was a really just smooth process that was that was easy to do and honestly not um, a drag, not a problem at all for me. And that's just the three points I wanted to hit at the front, the comfort, the hardware, and the accessibility, all really nice. The organization as well on the inside, which we're gonna get into, this thing is built like a giant camera cube. So obviously like the organization is really solid, it's really customizable depending on how you wanna run your things. Um, but let's just go ahead and Walk through all the nooks and crannies and things on this bag, starting with the handles. I already talked about the straps on the back. Again, super solid. You have a little grab handle here. It's just a little dinky one, a little, little, little itty bitty guy. Um, I didn't really use this that much, but at the front here, you also have, this is the big beefy handle that is really nice, easy to grab. When I was when I had this thing in the back of the Jeep and we drove, the way Bryce Canyon is, it's like an 18 mile stretch. And at the, at the very back, there's like viewpoints and we drove to each viewpoint until we reached the main trail and then we walked the main trail. So every time we got in, we were putting the bag up and then pulling it out. And when I pulled it out of the Jeep and threw it on, this handle was really, it was always right there and it was easy to grab. Even though I'm currently struggling because the day before I left for Bryce, I got knuckle tattoos because I was like, if I'm gonna be Peter McKinnon, I need more hand tattoos. Um, that's not really why, I just really wanted some tattoos on my knuckles and they were very tender. So like on the bottom here, there's a little, strap that's like up against it. I couldn't get my hand in there without rubbing up against my knuckles because I do a lot of my grabbing with my right hand. I couldn't couldn't really use this without it hurting. So I didn't really utilize this bottom handle, but it is here. And then you also have two handles on the sides here. They're a little off off centered, right? They're towards the, the, the top of the bag. Now I did use this a couple times just grabbing it and carrying it like briefcase style briefly. And the weight distribution was a little off. It was a little like bottom heavy for the most part, but if you were just gonna quickly use this to maybe like go through security or you know just walk from your, you know, your front door to your car and you didn't wanna put the bag on, these work really well. Okay, then we move to the water bottle pocket. This is just a little like water bottle I got from Walmart because I need something that opened 
like that a little bit easier than like unscrewing a hydro flask. This water bottle pocket has some mesh, a little stretch to it, a little give. You can fit tripods, smaller tripods and Gorilla Pods in here as well as larger water bottles. And then if it don't want to use it, it has these magnets and it just seamlessly fits like folds into the side of the bags where you don't have to really worry too much about it being like in the way or flopping. It just out of the way. It does come with accessory straps. I, I don't really use accessory straps. They're not something I usually clip on and use a whole lot of. So it, if you wanted to like use that to like strap a tripod or yoga mat or jackets or anything like that, it, you do have them, but mine are lost in my accessory case thing, probably with the, the waist straps somewhere, but super solid and nice water bottle pocket. Okay, real quick on the back here, this is your laptop sleeve. Fits um, 15 inch and some 17 inches, really nice. A Little bit off the bottom of the bag, very padded, very nice. I didn't utilize this at all because I didn't take my laptop with me when I was hiking, but a very nice laptop compartment on the back. Your tablet sleeves on the back of the main compartment, so we'll get to that in a second, but a really solid and nice laptop compartment, very well protected up against the back of your bag, or back, back of your back. Back of the bit of back of the Okay, then you have this quick access compartment, which is something that I really like. Um, I'm gonna do my best to show you, but inside here, there's a little divider that flips and you can have two like little different pockets. On that, it says fly the flag. Kind of hard to see, not the easiest thing to show, but a great quick access front compartment for sunglasses, wallet, keys, phone, uh, pocket two, GoPro could fit in here. But what I will say is you need to be careful because if you put anything that has a lot, that this dimension of the pocket is shared between the two sides of the pocket. So if you put something that's really big in one side, it's gonna eat up what you can put on the other side. So it might be just a one item pocket or it could be a good security dump if you're using this for travel, right? Going through security, you need a place to put your wallet, your phone, things like that. This is a great pocket just to throw all that in there. It does have a key clip in there. Um, this is actually where my keys ended up whenever I was walking around. Um, never used the key clip. Just not something I typically utilize, but a really solid front access compartment. Okay, then we move to what is the travel, uh, the clothing side of this. Now, I'm gonna do my best to kind of show you everything in here. This is the pocket, or this is the compartment that has expansion. This can be expanded out to like an extra, I think it's like five or maybe 10 liters-ish that makes it a little bit easier to carry your clothes. And this is the part of the bag that I'm not 100% sure will work for everybody, right? So if I flip this around, this is where I put my clothing. This is a, just a, a packed packing cube and uh, my extra pair of shoes. So if I undo this little like holder thing, right? You have, if you had a compression cube, you could probably fit more. For me, this is everything I would take for pretty much almost all trips. Uh, three pairs of shirts, a pair of pants, underwear and socks. I also wore a pair of pants and a shirt and underwear and socks. So this can basically be my loadout for as many days as I need, but, also, I, well, then I also, these are my packable shoes because if I was, I don't want to wear hiking boots the entire time. So this is where you get to put your clothing, right? You don't have to utilize packing cubes. Compression cubes are 100% probably the smart way to go, in my opinion. But if you're somebody that can't pack light, right? Which there's nothing wrong with that. If you're somebody that on a five day trip, you, you, on a five day trip, you need four pairs of shirts, you need two extra pairs of pants, plus underwear, plus socks, plus whatever. It might be kind of hard to fit all of that in here without this bag getting very bulgy, very bulky, right? So I think if you're someone that can, you know, can survive like with a weekend trip with just bringing like maybe a couple shirts and a pair of pants, some underwear and socks, this is gonna work really well. But for some, depending on how much you bring, this doesn't fit as much as it looks like it does. This is very limited. A lot of the expansion is towards the bottom, which is why my packing cube, the thick part of my packing cube, goes towards the bottom. But if you'll notice, like it does bulge out a little bit. I think this is a really good weekend bag for clothing because I would get rid of the expansion, just put a shirt, a pair of pants, and maybe something else in here, and it's just really streamlined. But as a travel bag, it does work. You just have to be careful with how much clothing you're willing to bring without this bag, not A, not being able to fit it, and B, being super bulgy and lumpy. And that you have four mesh guys, all the same size. This is a good one if you want to put like your underwear and socks in these, or maybe like your toiletry items like deodorant, cologne, toothbrush, toothpaste, things like that. You could easily fit in the back here. One thing I do love about this bag quite a lot is the, the look, right? The black with like the darker Mojave tan kind of. I like the way that that aesthetic works. But on the other side, 
you got some more organization in, I'm going to call this the travel section of the bag because this is kind of where it's geared towards the travel side of things. You got two mesh guys. Mesh guy up top is where I put my packable towel. I never travel or basically go anywhere without a packable towel. You never know. Below that is some of my hiking and camping accessories. I have um, like a wash wipe, like a, like a shower wipe, and then a warmer that you can activate, put this in your sleeping bag in case it gets cold, your, you know, for hands, whatever. Always bring a couple of these if I'm hiking and camping and it's going to drop down to the teens in the evening. You never know. You might need one. And then be be behind that is a large mesh guy that opens, and this is a pocket that you can fit extra clothing like dress shirts, extra pants, things like that. But the way I used it, these are like mountain house, freeze dried, add boiling water. I bring my jet boil, which is like a little, like little, little teeny tiny camp stove. You can boil water, add it to these, and you got meals and food on your hike that's not like sandwiches or you know anything like that. I had a couple of these extra, um, and they fit in there really well. And then if you've seen my pouches video, this is my Topo Designs pouch, and this is, I've restocked it since I got back from my hike. This is my snack pouch, Admiral Snack Pouch, reporting for duty. I've got like pastry bars and RX bars and Cliff bars and things like that. I literally never go anywhere without extra snacks because I get hungry very easily. So these, honestly, if you go hiking, I highly suggest uh, investing in like a jet boil because you can boil meals, you can do coffee with it. We made coffee in the morning with it. You can do... Uh, freeze dried foods you can do ramen noodles you can do you can heat up soup in it um you can take off the, like the thing you get like a little foldable pan you can cook on it it's awesome it's one of my favorite accessories maybe i'll do a review on it uh down the road so you have this whole compartment back here right so a big mesh guy two little mesh boys and then the rest of the travel compartment and then you can get rid of that expansion with this zipper that goes all the way around and then you can see, let me zip all of this up. Ah, I love those zippers, just love that I can. And then you get the, uh, the this non-expanded anymore, right? This is without the expansion, very thin. Now, if you're someone that's looking at this just as a big camera bag, and you're like, I don't really know if I would need this for travel, I don't know if what I would use this front compartment for. One thing that I have used this for when I just went out to take photos with it is I use this for my jacket or extra warming layers or anything that I might need to throw in to the front compartment just because I didn't want to carry it. I found that to be a really good pocket for that as well. It doesn't have to be utilized with the expansion or for strictly like clothing for travel. So the slim profile, then we get into the back compartment. So I'm going to lay this thing down and unzip it full clamshell on the back here and then open it up and bada bing bada boom this is your back thing this is that tablet sleeve i was telling you about um it goes down to like right about here so i don't know if you could fit like an ipad pro in there but definitely can fit some tablets also has plenty of organization in here so let's talk about these accessories you got two mesh guys these are like perfect for putting these accessory cases in i found that they all they all just work really well i think that was uh, there was, this whole thing was designed to fit these accessories. You could this. We'll, we'll talk about them. Let's just you know. Let's just let's just talk about. Them, right. So the first one is this is the indie filter case. Right. I don't have filters for any of my stuff. You fit up to six in these little mesh guys. I did, however, find that this works really well if you wanted to put cables in there. If you wanted this to be a cable couch, couch, cable couch, cable pouch, for like extra dongles or charging cables. You can easily kind of fold the cables up, extra dongles, whether it's like adapters for your computer, your phone, things like that. They all can actually fit in here really well. So there's something, one of the ways I've utilized this bat, uh, this pouch, not for this trip, but in the past is for uh, cables. And I really found that it works pretty well. The next one is a battery uh, case, uh, magnets on these, right? Love that, can fit up to three batteries. And one thing that the battery pouch thing comes with is these little stickers with skull and crossbones on them. You put those stickers on your battery, so when your battery dies and you put it in here, you can put the skull up so you know the battery's dead, or if you have extra batteries with those, you can put the skull down and you know the battery is still good. That way you can keep track of your charged and not charged batteries, which is just a really cool, like tiny addition that makes a big impact in my opinion. So super appreciate that, Peter McKinnon Nomadic. And then this is hands down the accessory case that I use the most. This is the SD case 
card case. You can fit up to six regular SD cards, two of the larger, and then the back here with the zippered guys where you can put your micro SDs. This thing is a lifesaver. Super easy to get these things out of here as well. Just something that I like that the thin profile of it, because you can put it in your pocket, you can literally fit anywhere on this bag. It can be in the front compartment. It's easy to access. This is something that I, SD cards are the one thing that I always need a place to put, but I never had anything really that worked because it was either in another tech pouch. I had to open that tech pouch and open the compartment form or the ones on Amazon are like really thick or bulky or just, I didn't really like them. And this works because I can literally put it in my pocket whenever I'm walking around if I want to, or it fits nicely in the mesh guy. So all three of these accessories are really, really solid. The other accessory that I think a lot of people have been curious about is this. This is the cube pack. This is a camera cube travel backpack, right? You can unzip the bottom of this and you have more organization. You can fit it right here in the, in the bag and have extra spots for this. Like, I guess if you're like bringing maybe like a drone, extra lenses, camera equipment, gear, stuff like that. Then this bag or this cube can expand out if you unzip the top, right? And it becomes a bag inside of a bag. And there's a, like a little compartment in the back here to put, um, you can actually fit some of those accessories I just mentioned in here. This is a really cool addition, right? Because it's literally a packable camera cube backpack. This is something that I think is really nice. It, it, it's very simple. These straps are very thin. They clip on down here. It's not gonna be the most comfortable if you wear this thing out like super heavy. It's gonna be uncomfortable because it doesn't have load lifters. The straps are thin, things like that. It's very well built, got mine a little dirty. But here's the thing about this. This isn't something that I would utilize with this bag for me personally, because the chances are if I'm going somewhere where I'm using this bag and I'm using all my gear, I'm not gonna leave this bag somewhere to then grab a smaller bag load this camera cube out with stuff, and then leave this bag behind. If I'm using this big bag, the chances are I'm using only this big bag. I don't need a packable camera cube. This is a good one that if you're gonna go out for a small shoot and you just needed something to bring like a camera and a lens and maybe a couple batteries, this is perfect for like a day trip, right? This isn't something that I think I would need if I was traveling. And that's me personally because I don't bring a lot of camera gear. This is, the besides this cube pack, right, this is, that's all of my camera gear, basically, if you can see that. That's basically all that I bring. So I wouldn't really need to utilize this, but if you're someone that brings a lot and you need to bring this with you, you totally could. Also, it just works as an extra little bit of organization. The reason I don't like that is because if, right, so if you just have this thing sitting in here and you're using it as extra organization, you have to leave this unzipped, which is something I don't like to do, or you have to unzip the main compartment and then pull this out and unzip it. Maybe if it's something like a special item, you don't need a whole lot or something, but I would rather utilize the extra space that you can get right here ugh, for like extra clothing or maybe just extra gear or like extra tech pouches or something like that. But that's just me. Your mileage will definitely vary depending on how you want to use it. But overall, that is... This is the inside of the bag without getting everything to fall out. This is my Canon M50, my two Canon M50 lenses. This is the Rainfly for the bag. I like to have a spot in the bag for the Rainfly. Any bag I use that comes with the Rainfly, I always have a designated spot. You never know, I always bring it with me just in case. Got my Canon Power Shot up here. This is a toiletry kit from Gravel. I have some extra cables as well as my minimal toiletry items in there. And then this is the Peter McKinnon Nomadic Accessory Case. And then, oh, and then in here, I got eye drops. And then these are my camera charge battery, battery chargers for my Canon, both my Canon cameras. This is an accessory case that I really, really dig. I mentioned this in my pouches video. This fits basically everything for my pocket too that I, I film a lot of. You can easily have cables, all the accessories, GoPro, small drones, all of that can fit really nicely in here. Plus, super rigid. This is something you can bring with another bag if you wanted to. And I really, it fits in here really nice. I love how easy it just fits right there. But you could also utilize that with other bags as well if you want to. Another thing I'll say about this bag, this is my home base camera station, right? I have 
in my office, which I'm not filming in. I'm, I don't know. I just feel like filming out here. It's a nice day. I can see the mountains from across me. Um, I leave this basically up against the wall on like a little table, open like this with all of my accessories, all of my camera gear, everything is laid out. And whenever I'm going to go like film a YouTube video or go take pictures, I can grab what I need out of here or just close it and take the whole bag. This works really well as like I, just a camera storage place as well. You don't have to utilize this just as a bag. If you really wanna get a big bang for your buck and you don't really have a place to store your cameras or if you just want a better place to store them, I found that just leaving them in this bag with this either unzipped or even open actually worked really well. But I think that's pretty much um, everything when it comes to the this bag. It's, it's very solid. I think it all works really well together. And again, with things like the Q-Pack, that's just my mileage. Your mileage will definitely vary. You might need that. You might be like, oh, I need I need a bag inside of a bag for extra camera gear because I leave my this bag in the truck and, uh, you know, who knows? But I will say it all depends on your personal needs, whether this bag is going to be worth the price tag and worth it for you personally. I think this is a phenomenal bag. Overall, I really enjoyed using it. It was a, it was a blast to use. I had a great time with it. It was super easy, streamlined. Everything worked really well together. It was comfortable, fit everything I need. Overall, a very, very, very solid bag that I do honestly think is worth the price tag. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this bag, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer those for you. Like I said, you can support me on Patreon. I uh, go over there, check in a buck. Every month on the 15th, I do a giveaway for my Patreons only. It's usually a bag or an accessory. All the money from Patreon goes back into the channel, whether it's to pay for shipping, for future giveaways or to buy bags to be reviewed to then be given away. Um, so that's if you wanna go over there to Patreon. Uh, shoot me an email, odiematthewsbags at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram, odie underscore Matthews. Uh, shout out to Peter McKinnon, right, for making a bag. <laughs> I mean, is there anything that dude literally can't do? I mean, he, he, he does film, he does commercials, he does photography, he does YouTube, he does epic videos, and now he created a bag. Insane, literally insane. Uh, if you guys could, leave a like, subscribe for more nonsense. Thanks for all the love and support you give this channel, and I will see you next time.